Hi, welcome back to the Gem Hawks YouTube channel. Thank you so much for continuing to drop in and support me here on YouTube and Facebook. Hope you're having a lovely day. Now, today I want to show you a tutorial which can be used for earrings, for drops, uh, for charms, for pendants. So this is the Barley Drop Charm tutorial, and this is quite a large version of what we're going to make. Can also be sized down to make slightly more delicate. So these are four millimeter jet beads today they make really pretty little charms i didn't have matching ear findings on the bench today but never mind you can find or make your own if you desire so materials wise i'm going to be working today with a 10 millimeter dyed blue banded agate single bead obviously if you're going to use earrings you're going to need two of those and 20 gauge or 0.8 millimeter gauge wire this can be sized up to one millimeter gauge this example is using your one millimeter gauge which is 18 gauge wire which makes a much more substantial piece. I'd recommend starting with the 20 gauge or the 8 mil 0.8 millimeter wire rather uh, because this will enable you to get a really lovely smooth feel for the technique. So if you'd like to join me down at the board, this one as I say is a 10 millimeter bead made with a one millimeter gauge or 18 gauge wire. So for the one millimetre gauge to create this piece, it was almost 12 inches of wire. You don't need quite as much when you're working with a finer gauge wire because of the way that it twists and turns. You don't need quite the same amount. So I'm going to demonstrate this technique for you now using the same 10 millimetre bead, but using some 0.8 millimetre or 20 gauge wire. So I'm just going to put some heat through there. There's probably about 11 inches, which is far more than we need. So to begin with, I'm going to warm the wire through and then probably a couple of inches, maybe three inches from the top of the wire, I'm going to put a bend in, a nice sharp 90 degree bend. Now this is a lovely soft wire, so it can kink a little bit when you turn that first corner. So I'm just going to make sure that I'm happy with that. This central rod needs to be quite strong. So what I'm doing here is applying a little bit of work hardening just by pressing down with the flat face of my pliers. I'm not going too close to the top because I will want to turn a loop near the top of this segment. So just applying a little bit of strength in the centre there. And I'm now going to drop down my bead into position. Now these are lovely beads and they do have a, a really superior size drill hole in them. Now if you're making earrings you have the option to go for a completely symmetrical so opposite, so whereas on my example that's on the board, I've turned right, come around and gone across the front of the central core wire. On the other side, I would need to turn left and then you will have a mirror image. Equally, if you prefer, you can just create the same, the same shape and size over and over again, which is what I'm going to show you today. But you do have the option of flipping the design from one side to the other if you are looking to create earrings. So just popping my bits and pieces out of the way, I'm going to smooth some warmth through the tail, the elongated tail of wire that we have here. And I'm going to support the central core wire needs to stay as straight as possible. So I'm going to draw that tail of wire all the way around the outside and over the front of that bead. So what I need to make sure is that from the very very bottom where we put our first 90 degree bend all the way up to the top I'm going to keep a straight line. So I've drawn the tail of wire all the way around the edge of the bead and I'm now going to flip that around the central core wire like so pulling that nice and firmly into position. If you need to get that a little bit tighter you can. Obviously agates a really nice strong uh, gemstone so I have no hesitation in placing my lovely bent chain nose pliers over that. So continuing all the way around the core wire and back in, the in a continuation the same direction that the wire was traveling when we began. What I need to do now is just push that down and make sure that it sits side by side with the first section of wire. So taking the tail around, forgive me if my hands are a little bit mucky today, I've been working with copper and uh, the colour is starting to come onto my fingers a little bit, so many apologies. So we have our first half moon or crescent shape around the bead and this is the face that we're going to be looking at in wear. So what I need to do now is allow the wire to form a beautiful swoosh around the outside of the bead like so and I'm going to snuggle it underneath where the first wire came out at the bottom of the bead. So I'm just going to push that 
ever so slightly and then I'll show you in this direction. So the wire is now going to continue up around the bead a little bit further back from the central line where the hole is. I'm going to flip it back onto its face and just draw the wire up and repeat the process. So what we want to do is to have our second pass of wire ever so slightly behind the first pass of wire against the body of the gemstone. So I'm going to hold that into position and then I'm going to repeat the process. So I'm drawing the wire all the way around the core, giving that a bit of a squeeze if I need to, continuing in the same direction. So give that a bit of a squeeze, push that down into position and just make sure that my central core wire is nice and straight. If you're working with the one millimetre gauge wire, it's much easier to keep a central core, but what you'll find is on the back, you end up with a significantly heavier weight of design. It's actually quite pretty from the back, it looks like a black hole collapsing on itself, but this is the face that we're looking to work with. So my wire has come all the way around the edge, behind the first encirclement, all the way around the core, and continuing in the same direction. So I'm going to put some warmth in the wire again, and I'm going to allow that, I'm not going to push it down, I'm going to allow it to come down with a little bit of space at the top, and then meet behind our first wire. If I flip this over to the back, you can see what I'm doing is I'm pushing it against the gemstone and against the preceding wrap of wire. So looking for that to circle all the way around before we flip it back onto its face, and then draw that up and over. We're not looking for too much tension here or you lose the kind of barley look to it. You don't want it to come up too tight. There's not really a great deal of tension until you get to wrap around the core. So again, we're going to repeat the process. You may need to just make sure that the wire has gone around the back of the preceding section. Draw that all the way into position. Take the tail around the core wire and as I say, you may need to use tools just to push that down into position and give it a squeeze so that it holds nice and neatly. Again, we're going to warm the next inch or so of wire, bring that around and repeat the process one more time. So allow the wire to just make its own kind of circular effect or arcing effect. It needs to be sat against the gemstone and immediately behind the preceding wire. So we're pulling that all the way around. I'll just give that a moment there, you can see what's happening. It's almost like a concertina around the back before we flip it onto the face, supporting the whole design, drawing the wire over the front face. So that is where I'm going to draw a halt to this particular part of the demonstration now. If you use a significantly larger length of wire, you can keep going, but what will happen is you will build up these series of rings on the rear. And if you're planning to wear that with long hair, it can be a little bit of a place to trap hair. So I tend to go for three or four wraps at most and you get that barley head type effect. It's almost like a half a herringbone stitch. So I'm going to support this very, very carefully, draw the wire around as if we were going to continue and do yet another wrap. And I'm going to give that a bit of a squeeze very, very gently. Just bring that into position push that down and then I'm going to cut probably two or three millimetres from the face. We'll get that tail of wire into the scrap pot and then all we're going to do is flip that around and just chase it until it sits neatly and tidily away at the back. You can trim more if you need to but that is your basic barley drop design and I'll show you now the differences between using a 0.8 millimetre 20 gauge wire and a one millimeter or 18 gauge wire. That's what they look like with a similar amount of turns and twists. Up at the top here, what we're going to do is allow ourselves a little bit of space before bringing forwards a loop. You can bring that to the side if you prefer. It depends on your earring findings. And I'm going to use some round nose pliers just to create a teeny tiny loop into which my earring finding can fit later. So I've made myself a little loop just going to wrap that round a couple of times and then cut off at the back, making sure that you cut the correct piece of wire. As I say, you can trim away from that first section if you need to. And then just smooth those so that they sit down flat and you can bring that up into position. Because I'm working with raw copper wire here today, if I need to turn that so that it's sideways, you absolutely can. Depends on your earring finding. So give that a bit of a squeeze to work hard on it. That's the difference. The barley drop 
with a, a 0 0.8 or 20 gauge or a one millimeter, which is 18 gauge. So that's your earring or charm tutorial for today. I hope you've enjoyed that one. So many different beads. You can make it with uh, funny shaped beads as well. You don't get quite the same aesthetic with that beautiful swooshing coming up, but it is entirely up to you how you want to personalize that, how many drops you want to go for. I really love this one and it is so quick to build up. It's very relaxing and therapeutic kind of design to work with as well. So I hope that you've enjoyed that and I hope to see you again in the very near future here on the Gemhawks YouTube channel. Have a lovely day and bye for now.